The other surprising thing that we found in our research is that you know, one of the central questions for an authoritarian regime or for a democracy that wants to rig an election is why hold an election at all? And what we found is that dictators and despots who hold elections but rig them actually stay in power for longer than people who don't hold elections at all. In other words, the best thing you can do to stay in power is to hold an election but manipulate it and ensure that you can win. And so for that, you need a dictator's toolbox. But I should say, and I'll point this out as I go through some examples, these tools that are used to rig elections are not just for dictators. They're also used in advanced democracies. And as I'll show you, there are amateurs and there are pros when it comes to election rigging. And I'll move through some examples to show you how the amateurs fail to rig elections and how the pros get away with it. So to start, we have one of my favorite examples of a rigged election was in Azerbaijan in 2013 where after pressure from the international community, the president said, you know what? We're going to be so transparent that we're going to create an iPhone app to release the results in real time so that voters can see that we have nothing to hide. Well, they made one mistake. It was sort of a big mistake, though. They accidentally released the results the day before the election. <laughs> so it wasn't that hard to figure out that this had been rigged, right? And initially, the government said, well, Look, we, uh, we actually, these are old results, but all the names of the candidates had changed, all the tallies had changed, and of course, it was just an IT mistake that was very embarrassing for them. Then you also have the question of how you buy votes, right? One of the age-old ways of manipulating a democracy is vote buying, giving cash or gifts to voters in exchange for their loyalty. But there's a big problem with vote buying, as many dictators and despots have found out, is that unless you have a way to enforce it, unless you can look over the shoulder of the voter when they push that button or fill out that ballot, they can take your money and vote for somebody else. So it's not the most effective way to rig an election at all times because you end up spending a lot of money and you don't always get the result you want. Then on top of that, you have stuffing the ballot box, right? This is, with paper ballots, it's one of the big risks is that you can stuff ballots. There's a big problem with stuffing the ballot box too, which dictators and despots have learned which is you don't know how much is enough, right? If you're in an authoritarian country, you're not exactly sure what your actual support is. You don't know if you already have 30% of public support or you have 70% of public support. So you have to make a decision about how much you stuff the ballot box, and very often your henchmen get it wrong. They put too many ballots in one ballot box and it's more than the number of voters in the precinct, or they rig too aggressively in some other way. And then you get caught, right, and the game is up. And my favorite example of this, and this is going back to Belarus, that country where I was talking to uh, Mikolai Stotkevich at the beginning, the dictator of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, he told his subordinates at the uh, national level that he wanted, this is by the way my favorite cartoon, I saw this in a bathroom in Minsk, and I, I think the, the resemblance is quite striking. <laughs> but uh, th he told his subordinates that he wanted 78% of the vote, right? He figured this is enough that I'll get away with it, but it will also signal to the opposition that they're hopeless, that they're going to lose and they've lost badly. The problem is that if you screw up in a dictatorship, you can get killed or thrown in jail. So his subordinates told their subordinates, we want 81%. And their subordinates told their subordinates, we want 83%, and so on and so forth, and eventually he got 85% of the vote, which was too high to be plausible. So as far as I know, he is the only despot or dictator who has publicly admitted to rigging an election downward to reduce the margin of victory for himself so it would be more plausible.